Hey, what's going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here. It's breaking the two-game NBA slate, that being the Saturday-Sunday slate, the two-day slate. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I make daily videos breaking out NBA, NFL, PGA, and esports. Today, fantasy sports slates. Real quick, I do want to say thank you guys again for all support. Um, currently, I have 4.88 thousand subscribers now on YouTube, closing in slowly but surely on 5K. Um, if you guys enjoy the content, would really appreciate it. Leave a like button on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload videos you don't want to go live. Also, if you guys cannot watch the YouTube videos, I do upload on Apple Podcasts. The link is in the description below to the DKDFS show. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Um, if you guys are interested into the showdown slate, the Boston-Miami showdown slate, I do already have a video up. I uploaded it right before this. So check that out if you guys are interested in the showdown slate. But let's talk about the two-game slate. Before we get into the prices, let's take a look back at my lineup here from the last two-game slate. And I was so, so close to taking down uh, the the uh, the big tournament here. I guess, well, it wasn't huge. It was like 3 or 4K entries. Finished 34th. Um, first of all, I'm really kicking myself. I mentioned it in the showdown slate, but I'm really kicking myself for not entering more. I thought there was a huge edge. And when I think there's a big edge in slates, I will enter a lot. I just I had a lot going on with NBA, NFL. Um, I'm, I'm really kicking myself because normally if I, if I think there's a big edge, which I did on this slate, I will enter a lot more. I only played, what was it like the $10, 10K to first tournament? That was it. So really, really kicking myself because first of all, Duncan Robinson, I was super, super high in him. I told you guys that, that we're not, he was not going to play 14, 17 minutes. He was not going to get in foul trouble every single game. I said at least 25 minutes. He played 32 minutes, had 31 fancy points at 18% ownership. Love, love plays like that because the recency bias people will box score wash and just avoid it. And I was super, super high on Duncan. I know a lot of you guys played him. A lot of you guys made big money hitting me up in the DM. So congrats um, on that. But yeah, paired him with Tyler Hero. I, I told you guys, those are my two favorite plays in Miami. What was it, the Thursday, Friday slate? Those are my two favorite plays. I, I told you guys I was going Kemba too. I was hoping for a bounce back shooting day. He had a subpar shooting day and still was, was really solid at his price. And then I want the like, uh, or the Friday game. AD, Rondo, Dwight. Dwight Howard was 11% owned. 11%. I told you guys, play Rondo, play Dwight. I couldn't believe he was that low owned. I was literally shocked. Um, he had played really well defensively against Jokic all year. It was obviously a big matchup. Like He was not going to get a DNP. This is not the Rockets matchup, right? And people just were box score watch. They saw he didn't play, and they didn't play him. 11% ownership is absolutely insane for Dwight. Again, there's a huge edge there. Rondo being only 15, 56% owned really shocked me. I thought those two were the top value plays, the clear top value plays, like easily. KCP kind of just fit in my lineup. He actually had a decent day. AD was good. Jokic the one lot down, and I am so tilted. So, so tilted because he doesn't get if he doesn't get in foul trouble, Denver probably keeps the game close. And if they stay close, I have a real good shot to win the tournament. I finished 25, 25 points back. Um, this is the first place lineup. Let's see. Uh, he had Michael Porter Jr., who he got lucky there because the game blew out. He got extended in the blowout. Um, he had KCP, AD, and Rod, right? So he didn't have Jokic. Again, Jokic plays. I, I probably have, or he does get in foul trouble. Probably a really, really good shot to take down the tournament. So I uh, got a bit of lucky there, but that's the luck back of the, of the two-game slate. So, Let's take a look at these odds. A 2-8 over under. Boston three-point favorites. Um, and then Denver, LA. It's a 2-13.5 over under. Lakers, 7.5 point favorites. All right, let's talk about center. We have Jokic at the top, 10-7. So, he was low owned last slate in the two-game slate. He's going to be even lower owned in this slate because the foul trouble, right? He missed out on huge minutes and the blowout. He didn't come back in the fourth quarter. If Denver is going to stay in this game, it's going to be because of a big game from Jokic, a big game from Jamal Murray. I have absolutely no issue going back to Jokic. The ownership is going to be super low. I like him. And people are not going to play him on this slate. I think he's a really solid play, even at 10-7, because I know he's going to be low owned. You saw he went crazy in the first quarter. Like, I, I forget what he had fancy points-wise, but he was going absolutely off. Um, and then he picked up, he came back in the second quarter and picked up two quick fouls and didn't play at all the rest of the second quarter. So... Got a bit unlucky there. He was on pace to crush. Um, I, I like Jokic. He's going to be low-owned, but I like him. I still like AD. Again, I mentioned I preferred him to LeBron. AD, I think, finished with 15 more fancy points, and LeBron was like $1,000 more. Once again, I prefer Anthony Davis to LeBron James. It's just a price tag thing. When they're about the same price, then it's almost 
But with them being, you know, still, what, LeBron's like 11-2, I believe? Yeah, I'm just I'm going to prefer Anthony Davis all day long when he's at a $700 dis a discount. Bam at a bio's at 8-5. I think, like, for if you're going for the safe option at center on this two-game slate, it's probably Bam. He was high-owned the last two-game slate. He was, like, almost 50%. He's going to be the, the highest-owned again here. Um, as far as like the, the sped up centers, I think, because of his price. So if you're going for the safety, probably the optimal play at center, it probably is Bam. Um, he'll probably get around 35-ish minutes. He's a really, really solid point per minute guy. He's a do-it-all guy. So I think Bam's a pretty good play there at 8-5. Yeah, Tyson I'm just not going to get to a 5-4. I just don't think we have to do it on the slate. Not enough uh, upside, in my opinion. Millsap versus Michael Porter Jr., it's always a question mark of their minutes, right? The blowout really helped MPJ. That's going to raise MPJ's ownership. If the game stays close, I don't know if MPJ plays those minutes. So it's always a toss-up with these guys. They're literally up and down every single time. If you can guess right and who, who gets extended between Millsap and MPJ, uh, then you're probably in really good shape. But it's literally 50-50 with those two guys. Markeith Morris got extended a bit because of the blowout. Only played 16 minutes. I'm a little bit worried about his myth. He, I think he's playable, but not my favorite value play. Kelly O, another risky play on this on this uh, slate. Probably gets around 10 to 15 fans points. He's a good point minute guy, but um, right now the minutes aren't super high in him. Dwight, once again, my favorite value play, 3-3. Three, three, just, just way too cheap. Only played 16 minutes. Had 23 fancy points. He was way better on defense than JaVel McGee against um, Jokic, and he started the second half. I think there's a pretty decent chance Dwight Howard starts this game. This next game. Now, the ownership's going to be way up, right? I was super high on Dwight the last slate. We got him at 11% ownership. It's just going to be up. We're not going to get him at a low ownership this time, but I'm fine with it. I'm fine eating the chalk. I'm playing Dwight Howard once again at 3-3. Him, Rondo, again, are my two favorite value plays in the slate, and I will be playing both. McGee, I'm just not going to get to. Didn't look great out there, um, and, and the minutes went down on him. He did come back in in garbage time. That's why he played 11 minutes. He was only on pace. I think he played six minutes in the first quarter. That was it. So... I assume Dwight Howard is going to start this game. Could could go back to McGee, but I'm, I'm not going to consider JaVel McGee. And that's really it for center. I guess I could mention Ennis Cantor. He did play. Does he play again? I think it's a 50-50 shot. Um, he could get a DNP. That's the risk. He's a good point per minute guy. If I knew Ennis Cantor was going to play 15 minutes, I would lock him in. Lock him in at 3K. But there's no guarantee. Does Robert Williams get back in the rotation? I don't know. So it's a super, super risky play here for, uh, for Ennis Cantor. That's it for Senna. Let's talk about power forward. AD at 10-5. Again, I prefer him to LeBron James just for the discount. I think he's the better option. Tatum at 9-8. Um, I'm still going to prefer AD to Tatum, and especially if Gordon Hayward is back. If Gordon Hayward's back in this rotation, everyone in Boston gets a huge hit. So I wouldn't, if Gordon Hayward plays, I don't even know if I would play any of the main Boston guys, to be honest. Like, I, I don't think I would. So if Hayward's out, Tatum's playable. But I would still prefer Anthony Davis to Jason Tatum. Again, Hayward, this is slate changing news. He's at 6'6". Six, six, a much playable price point than he is in the showdown slate. Um, if he plays, and it's not going to be limited, I think he's he's a decent play in the mid-range. If he's out, then the Boston guys become more playable. Crowder's at 5'9". Again, you know what you're getting into at Jay Crowder. 35, 30-35-ish minutes, probably about 30 fancy points. I think he's a safe option here at 5'9". Absolutely no issue. I much prefer Crowder to Daniel Tice. Like, mention that showdown, mention this two-game slate. Crowder over Tice all day long. MPJ, this is this is an interesting one, right? He got extended because of the blow. Played well, but Jokic and Murray were on the bench the whole fourth quarter. So it was the M it was the MPJ show. He was the guy that they ran the offense through. If the game stays close, I don't know about his minutes, right? It's him, Millsap, who knows? So and the ownership will be up. The ownership's gonna be up after the last game. It's a tricky one. You kind of just gotta guess right on who gets extended, whether it be MPJ or Millsap here for Denver. Grant's a 4-6, fine, play 30, 35 minutes, low usage guy. Playable, but not my favorite play. Kuzma, 4-5, will probably get 25 minutes. Another guy that's playable, but I prefer Dwight. I prefer Rondo for value on the, for the Lakers. Uh, yeah, Mar or, or Mark Keith Morris mentioned him. Um, the minutes went down on him because of the you know the bigger match there against Denver. All right, let's move on to small forward. LeBron 11-2. Um, I do prefer Anthony Davis for the price. You can play both. If you're going to play both Anthony Davis and LeBron, just go game stack, right? Run it back with Jokic or Murray. So it's playable, but the only way I would do that is if I go the full game stack. I do prefer AD if you're going to make me pick. Jimmy Baller at 8-3. Does look better on here than he does the showdown. Um, I still think I prefer Bam at a bio, though. His floor is a little bit higher than Jimmy. 
Jimmy's just a guy, he's a frustrating uh, player at times because there's games that will defer offensively. But there's also games in the fourth quarter where he completely takes over. So he's up and down. If you can get, if you guess right and he's he's going to take over in the fourth quarter, he's, he can probably get you to 50 fantasy points. But it's a little bit of a riskier play, not saying he's out of play at all. Jalen Brown, I'm, just, I'm not doing it. 7-8, talked about the showdown slate. I'm not, I'm not playing Jalen Brown, especially if Gordon Hayward's back. There's absolutely no way. Um, if Hayward's out, you can consider him, but I would prefer getting to Tatum. I would prefer getting to Kemba Walker over Jalen Brown. <sighs> Let's see. Other options. Duncan Robinson, I think, looks like a pretty decent value play as well. Now, like Dwight, we're not going to get the ownership like we did the last time. right? We got Duncan at 15%, Dwight at 11%. This is not going to happen, unfortunately. But I still like them both. Um, yeah, the first, those last two games for, for Duncan, 14 and 17 minutes, he was in foul trouble, both games. Game he didn't stay out of foul trouble, or he stayed out of foul trouble, 32 minutes. I think the plan is for him to play at least 25 minutes, and then upside of more if he's, if he's shooting the ball well, like he did last game. So Duncan's playable, I think he's a pretty good price point at 4-4, and the, the ceiling's pretty high if he's hitting a shot. So I do like Duncan a good amount here as a value option. Danny Green, KCP. You know what you're getting into with these guys, 25 to 30 minutes, scoring dependent, but I think both are, are pretty decent value options. I do slightly prefer KCP because he's playing more minutes, but both guys look like look pretty good. I'm not going to play Iguodala. Um, Torrey Craig at 3-2, I'll pass on. And that's it for, for small forwards. Let's move on to shooting guard. Jamal Murray, 9K, I think he's a pretty decent option. I don't think Denver gets blown out again. And like I said, if Denver stays, keeps it close, it's Murray, it's Jokic. They were actually both in foul trouble that last game. So... I, I do prefer Jokic for an extra almost $2,000 to Jamal Murray. I think he's safer. But if you can't get to Jokic and you want Denver exposure, Jamal Murray's your guy, right? Because the offense, it's Murray, it's Jokic. Whereas in the Miami and Boston game, right? Miami, there's a lot of guys that can take over. Jimmy, Bam, Drogic, Hero, Jay Crowder can score the ball. Duncan Robinson, right? For Boston, Kemba, Brown, Tatum, Smart, possibly Hayward if he plays. Whereas... For the Lakers, for the Nuggets, you know where the offense is coming from. It's AD, it's LeBron, obviously. For Denver, it's Murray, it's Jokic. Like, if you watch those games, everyone else in Denver stands in the corner waiting to shoot threes. So it's Murray, it's Jokic, you know where the offense is coming from. If they're going to keep it close, you're probably going to see a big game from both. So I do like both Denver guys to do slightly prefer Jokic to Murray. Um, Marcus Smart at 6-9, I'm just not going to get to, especially if Gordon Hayward plays. Uh, I'm just not getting to 6-9 Marcus Smart. Hero at 6K, price is slowly coming up, but I, I prefer him to Smart for his price. He'll play about 32 minutes. If, if Duncan or someone else gets in foul trouble, he'll play more. And he's a really good point per minute guy. He's a do-it-all guy. Like, look at those box scores, right? 14, 8, and 6. 12, 11, and 9. 11, 9, and 5. I, I like Tyler Hero a good amount here at, at 6K. I think he's a pretty solid play. Gary Harris um, had a floor game there, seven fancy points. The floor is somewhat low, right, because he's a stand in the corner, shoot three guy, like I mentioned. He's going to get the minutes. He'll play close to 40 minutes if this game stays close. But the offense is Murray. The offense is Jokic. It's just a matter of can Gary Harris hit a shot. So he's playable. The ownership's going to drop. Um, I don't have an issue with Gary Harris if you land on him. Talk about Green, KCP, I think they're pretty decent value options, both at below 4K. Cruz is at 3.5, still got decent minutes, was actually solid. I think he's okay, uh, but I would rather get to Rondo for a little bit more. And that's it for shooting guard. Let's finish up with the point guard today. Talk about LeBron and Jamal Murray. We have Kemba, Drogic, almost similar price points, almost similar plays to me. Um, again, I prefer Kemba to Jalen Brown. With Kemba versus Drogic, it's literally a coin flip for me. Kemba will play a few extra minutes, but Drogic is a slightly better point than a guy. Literally almost identical. Now, if Gordon Hayward plays, I would probably give that to Drogic. But right now, as it stands, it's almost a 50-50 for me. I think both are pretty decent plays kind of in the mid-range. Yeah, right? There's just no, no way. There's absolutely no way I'm playing Marcus Smart over Drogic or Kemba Walker. Like, Smart will have one of those big games, like, once every 15 games that we saw, what, four games ago, where we went to double overtime. I'm just, I'm not prioritizing him. I would much rather get to Drogic or Smart. Rondo, 4-7, I'm going to play. The, the minutes weren't huge on him, but it was a blowout, right? He played 22 minutes. That Houston game only played 21. Again, due to a blowout. I think he plays close to 30 minutes in a close game. And Rondo's a do-it-all guy. Nine points, seven, or, or seven points, nine assists. One rebound, two steals. I'm playing Rondo, and I'm playing Dwight, and I'm telling you guys, I think you should play both as well for value. I think they're the top two value plays of the day. Uh, also, a guy like Duncan Robinson is, is in there, too. 
Wanamaker's tricky here at 3-5. If Gordon Hayward plays, I'm not going to get to him. If Gordon Hayward's out, he's playable. 25 and 24 minutes. I still think I would prefer Dwight and Rondo for value, but Wanamaker would be in consideration as a value option. Monte Morris at 3-4. He'll play 15-ish minutes. You can do it, but again, I prefer Dwight. I prefer Rondo for value. I prefer Duncan Robinson. Um, all right, I think that's really going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, I'd really appreciate it. If you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell um, so you know when I upload videos, you know when I go live. Again, unfortunately, I'm not going to be live streaming for this one, but if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them on Twitter. So hit me up um, either, again, on Twitter or in Twitter DMs. Um, thanks again, guys. I hope you guys all have a good Saturday, and I will see you all uh, later. Again, if NFL coming up tomorrow. I will be live streaming one hour before lock for the NFL main slate. Be sure to check that out as well. Uh, thanks again, guys, and I will see you all tomorrow uh, in the NFL live stream.